God glory and honor in our homes, wherever you are. We lift up the name of the Lord right now. Lift up his name, bless his name. He's worthy, he's worthy. He's worthy of all glory and honor. We bless your name. Be God all by yourself, Lord. Be 
God in our situation, be God, Lord. In our families, be God. In our families, be God. In our workplaces, be God. Be God, Lord. In this situation we find ourselves, be God. Be God, Lord. We bless your name in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It's time to praise the Lord our God. We rejoice in him. Because it's giving us victory. Your name in our family. 
all is we lift your name. In the nation we lift your name. Over every disease we lift your name. Over every pain we lift your name. Over every heartache we lift your name. Oh, we lift your name. Oh, we lift your name. We shout, 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 hallelujah. Shout, hallelujah. Shout, hallelujah. Give him a shout, give him a shout. Shout, shout, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Kingdom addict. Kingdom addict. We want to enter into a time of prayer. Amen. I want to pray and say that, Father, thank you for the massive outpouring of the rain of your word upon our altars, culminating in supernatural turnarounds for all after the order of Joseph in the name of Jesus. Amen. Psalm 105, verse 17 to 20 said that he sent a man before them even Joseph, who was sold for a servant, whose feet they hurt with fetters. He was laid in iron. Until the time of his word came, the word of the Lord tried him. And the king sent and lose him, even the ruler of the people, and let him go. Amen. So I want to pray and say that, Father, thank you for the massive outpouring of the rain of your word upon our altars, culminating in supernatural turnaround for all after the order of Joseph. Lift up your voice in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise. We thank you, Lord, for the outpouring, Lord, of your word, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for pouring out your word, Lord, in power and in might of God upon us, Lord, at every meeting in the mighty name of Jesus. Your name alone be praised. Thank you, Lord, for your word never runs dry, Lord, upon our altars in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for constantly, Lord, the fire of your word, Lord, burns ever bright upon our altars, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. We bless you, Lord. We give you praise. We bless you. We give you honor in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your word that is sent forth upon us, O God, that culminates in supernatural turnarounds, Lord, in our lives, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Your name alone be praised. Your name alone be glory in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your word you constantly send upon us, O God, in the name of Jesus. That sends, that brings healings, Lord, that brings deliverance, O Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. We bless you, Lord, for the power of your word. And we thank you, Lord, that your word never runs dry, Lord, in our lives, Lord, upon our altars, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Your name alone be praised, Lord. Your name alone be glorified. Thank you, Lord, for the power of your word. Thank you, Lord, for your word, O oh God, that impacts us greatly, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. We bless you. We give you all the praise. Thank you, Lord, for the massive outpouring of your word, Lord, upon us, Lord, upon our altars, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that after the order of Joseph, Lord, you have sent forth your word, O God, and your word has brought forth healings. Your word has brought forth deliverances in the mighty name of Jesus. We give you praise. We give you glory in the mighty name of Jesus. We bless your name. We honor you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the reign of your word. We bless you, Lord, that your word never ceases upon our altars. We bless you, Lord, that your word constantly, Lord, impacts our lives, Lord, and we live here changed and impacted, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. We give you praise. We give you glory. Thank you, Lord, for the massive outpouring of your word. We thank you that, Lord, your word never ceases. Your word continually comes upon us, O God, and does not return to you void, O God, but comes to achieve, O God, whatever purpose you've sent it, O Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for the massive outpouring of your word upon our altars, in the mighty name of Jesus. Your word never goes dry, Lord, in our lives, Lord, on our altars, Lord. So we bless you for it, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Your name alone be praised. Your name alone be glorified. Your name alone be lifted up, O God. For your word you send constantly, Lord, in season upon us, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Even in this time, O God, you send forth your word in power and in might, O God. We bless your holy name. We give you praise. We bless your holy name. We give you praise in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for the outpouring of your word, Lord. Thank you, Lord, 
uh, that receive your word, oh God, on good hearts, oh God, uh, and your word yields fruit in our lives, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Your name be praised, your name be glory, that your word never runs dry upon our altars. We bless your holy name, we give you praise. We bless your holy name, we give you praise in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Uh, thank you, Lord, uh, for your word that you sent forth in power and in mind unto us, Lord. We bless and honor your name in the mighty name of Jesus. We bless and honor your name, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for the supernatural turnarounds, Lord, uh, that your word brings about in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for the breakthroughs, O oh God, uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, O oh God, uh, for the fulfillment of your word in our lives. We give you praise. We give you glory. We honor your name, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. For you are the one who sends the word in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for sending forth your word, O oh God, upon our altars in the mighty name of Jesus. Your name alone be praised and glorified in Jesus' precious name we've prayed. Amen. Amen. We want to pray again. Amen. We want to say, Father, by the efficacy of your precious blood, I decree supernatural exemption for me and for every faith house member and our families against the COVID-19 pandemic in the name of Jesus. Amen. Exodus chapter 12 verse 13 says that now the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be on you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. Amen. So you want to pray and plead the blood and once the father by the efficacy of your precious blood i decree supernatural exemption for me and for every faith house member and our families against the covid 19 pandemic in jesus precious name lift up your voice and pray father by the power in your blood that is shed on calvary by the efficacy of your blood i decree supernatural exemption lord for me oh god and for my family in the mighty name of jesus we decree lord exemption lord for all our families, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, for every faith house member in the name of Jesus. We pray, O oh God, uh, that none shall be a victim amongst us, O oh God. None shall be a victim amongst us, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. We take cover, Lord, in the precious blood of Jesus. We take cover, Lord, in the precious blood of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus. We find safety, Lord, in your blood, in the name of Jesus. We find safety, O oh God, in your blood in the mighty name of jesus we decree oh god that your blood oh god marks oh god our doorpost lord your blood marks us oh god in the mighty name of jesus and when covid 19 sees us oh god it passes over in the mighty name of jesus we pray oh god that we take cover in your blood in the mighty name of jesus let your blood oh god speak better things oh god for us lord in the mighty name of jesus let your blood oh god speak better things for us, O oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. We hide in your blood, in the mighty name of Jesus. We hide in your precious blood, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. For we overcame him, O oh God, by the blood, O oh God, and by the word of our testimonies, in the name of Jesus, Lord. We hide in your blood. We take shelter, Lord, in your precious blood, in the mighty name of Jesus. Let your blood, O oh God, speak deliverance. Let your blood, O oh God, speak exemption, Lord, for us, O oh God, God, for every faith house member of oh God, for all our family members Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, wherever they are oh God whether they are in Ghana, wherever they are wherever part of the world they are Lord we speak covering Lord upon them in the mighty name of Jesus, by virtue of your blood, we speak supernatural covering Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, let your blood oh God, become a hedge of protection Lord, upon us Lord and our families, in the mighty name of Jesus, let your blood oh Oh God, be the safety tower, Lord, that we run into, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Let the power of your blood, let the efficacy of your blood speak protection in the mighty name of Jesus. Speak protection in the mighty name of Jesus. Speak deliverance, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Speak exemption for us, O oh God, and our families in the mighty name of Jesus. Let not amongst us, O oh God, be a victim in the mighty name of Jesus. Let it be said after all this, O oh God, that faith 
has members and their families were exempted in the mighty name of Jesus. Faith has members and their families were not touched in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray, oh God, that we seek covering in your blood in the mighty name of Jesus. Let the power of your blood, oh God, bring deliverance, bring safety in everything we do, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Because of the blood, we can come in contact with COVID-19 and it shall not harm us. In the mighty name of Jesus, let your blood speak better things, Lord. Let your blood speak better things, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, we hide in your blood. We hide in your blood. In the mighty name of Jesus, thank you, Lord, for safety in your blood. Thank you, O God, for redemption in your blood. Thank you, Lord, for exemption in your blood. In the mighty name of Jesus, thank you, Lord, that COVID-19 sees your blood over us, Lord, and passes away and passes over. In the mighty name of Jesus, we give you all the praise. We give you glory. Thank you, Lord, for the power in your blood. That is speaking exemption for every member of this family, for every member of Faith House. We give you praise and glory. We thank you, Lord, that your blood has power to, to, to deliver. We bless you, Lord, that your blood has power, Lord, to exempt us, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. We give you praise. We give you glory. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Kingdom addict. Kingdom addict. Amen. Hallelujah. We want to declare that there's no other name that any man will be saved than the name Jesus. Amen. There is only one name. There is only one name with power to save. to say oh, there is only one name there is only one name with power to say power to say
praise the Lord. Kingdom added. Kingdom added. We thank God for an opportunity to appear before him tonight. The Bible says they go from strength to strength. Every one of them in Zion appeared before God. Shall we bow down our heads and pray even as we get into the word of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the privilege to come before you. Thank you that through this medium and platform, we are still able to stay in fellowship in spirit, though in, not together. We bless you for this time. We ask the Lord, in this series, you bless our lives. Bring your word in season, your good word, your right word, your timely word to every hearer. Thank you, Spirit of God, that no life shall be remain the same through this teaching. In Jesus' precious name, amen. All right, God richly bless you. I want to encourage you to invite your friends, family, friends far and near, wherever they are, to follow and be part of this teaching series. I have no doubt that it's going to bless your life a great deal. Come with me to the book of Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1 to 8. To everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck what is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones. A time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. That looks like social distance from here. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. Verse 5. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. So God spoke about social distance 3,000 plus years ago before it was recently discovered. Verse 6, please. A time to get and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. Seven. A time to rend, a time to sow. A time to keep silence, a time to keep. Eight. A time to love, a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. First Chronicles 12, verse 32. These are foundational scriptures that we are going to be needing and falling upon every now and then all through this teaching series. And of the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the times, to know what Israel ought to do, the heads of them were 200, and all their brethren were at their commandment. And the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the times, to know what Israel ought to do, the heads of them were 200, and all their brethren were at their commandment. Let's read our final foundational scripture, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 1. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 1. But of the times and seasons, you have no need that I write unto you. But of the times and the seasons, you have no need that I write unto you. I'm beginning a new series, beginning from tonight, that I have captioned, Understanding times and seasons. Understanding times and seasons. Understanding times and seasons. You must understand that we live in times. The times we live in are not very pleasant times. All kinds of things are going on. Things we don't understand. Things we, we wish we never live to see them and yet we are seeing them. And we need to get into the word of God to understand from God's perspective. What are these times that we are living in? When you are very active on social media, I'm sure you are hearing all kinds of things. People have all kinds of conspiracies and theories about these times. But what is God saying specifically to us about these times? What has the word of God got to say about the times we live in? How does God expect us to live in these times? Those are the things we seek, we seek to address in this, teaching, in this teaching series. And I trust that as you follow actively and invite your friends to come along, your life is going to be uh, richly blessed and transformed. There are two kinds of time. Two kinds of time. In English, when we say time, we mean time. But in Greek, when they talk about time, in fact, the Greeks has, have a number of uh, weights or number of ways they describe time. 
but we are going to limit ourselves to two of them which are very important and relevant for our study. First Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 1. First said, but of the times and the seasons, of the times and seasons, brethren, I, you have no need that I write unto you. Of the times and seasons. If the Bible is yours, you can underline times and seasons. Times and seasons. The word times there comes from the Greek word which is translated time, times, chronos. It comes from the Greek word chronos. And then seasons comes from the Greek word karos. Karos. So there are two kinds of time there we see here. Times refers to chronos. And then seasons refers to karos. Now, somebody will be wondering, what is this, the meaning of this word, chronos? Chronos is a Greek word, and it refers to measurable time. When a Greek man talks about chronos, he's talking about time that can be measured. Measurable time, either a short time or a long time. So, in chronos, we can talk about a minute, a second, one hour, nine to ten. That's chronos time. It's a measurable time. 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. That is a measurable time. Chronos time is quantitative time. Time that can be measured. When you read the book of Galatians chapter 4, verse 1 to 4, Galatians 4, 1 to 4, the Bible says, Now the heir, as long as he is a child, different nothing from a servant, though he be lord of all, but is under tutors and governance until the time appointed of the father. Go to verse 3. He says, Even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. Verse 4 is what I'm interested in. But when the fullness of time was come, the word fullness, the fullness of time, the word time there talks about chronos time. When the fullness of time was come, God sent forward his son, made of a woman, made under the law. So that's chronos time. Then we also have chaos time. Chaos time. Chaos time. Carol's time. Now, Carol's time refers to seasonal time. Seasonal time. That is seasonal time. Like we have the rainy season. We have the dry season. Some people have winter. Others have uh, they have winter, summer, autumn. All of these are seasonal times. We, we know that when the rainy season is up, we expect the rains to fall. That is seasonal time. And we see that in the book of 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6. 1 Peter 5, 6. Look at what the Bible says. It says, Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. The word due time talks about chaos. Again, Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. Galatians chapter 6 verse 9 said, Let us not be weary in well doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. We shall reap if we faint not. The word due season talks about Carol's time. Carol's time specifically talks about the right moment, it talks about the opportune moment, it talks about the perfect moment to do a thing. The right moment. The opportune moment, the perfect moment for an action to be taken. The Bible says that there is an opportune time to do things. A right time for everything on the earth. That is Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1, the message version. Carol's time, unlike Kronos time, is qualitative time. It's qualitative time. You remember when Mordecai sent a word to Esther. He said, if you decide to hold your peace at this time, Esther 4 verse 14, Esther 4 14, he said, if you decide to hold your peace at this time, deliverance and relief will come to God's people from another place. But who knows, yet you may have come into the kingdom for such a time as this. That time is Carol's time. Now, why is it so important that we understand the times? Why is it so important that we understand the times? I want to walk you through a few reasons why it's vital that as a child of God, you understand the times we are living in so that you can make the most of your life. The Bible says that of the men of Issachar, which had understanding of the times, they knew what to do. So obviously, our appreciation of the times will help us to know what to do. 
if we don't understand the time we are in, we can be doing the right things, but we will not be getting the results we need to get. If you, are, you, you want to propose love to a lady and you don't time yourself well, you can fire the word. The lady may love you, but the word may backfire. Why? Because timing is very important. Why do we need to understand the times? Because number one, we serve the God of times and seasons. Beloved, I want you to appreciate that our God is a God of times and seasons. Time and seasons originated from God. These times that we are living in, no matter how you describe them, I want you to know that times and seasons originated from God. In the book of Genesis 1.14, he says, And God said, Let there be light in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs, for seasons, for days and years. This was when God initiated time. And they were designed for seasons, times, signs, days or years. And you know, like I do, that years, days, Minutes, hours, they are all a unit. They are all units used to measure time. So that's when God initiated time. Time originated from God. And I like what the book of Daniel says. God does not just initiate time. God can also change the seasons. God can change the times. Look at Daniel chapter 2 verse 21, 20 to 21. Then Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever. For wisdom and might are his. Verse 21. And he changed the times and the seasons. And I speak that these negative times we are in will be changed by God. In the name of Jesus. Whatever negative season, whatever negative time you find yourself in. As we go through this series, by the time it's over, God, the miracle working God would have stepped into that time for you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Your weeping may endure for a night, but your joy is coming. In the mighty name of Jesus. So number one, we need to understand times because God is a God of times and seasons. Number two, we need to understand times because God ordained time and scheduled seasons for our benefit. God ordained time and scheduled seasons for our benefit. Seasons have been scheduled for our benefit. When it rains, I mean this year in particular from January, the weather has been strangely too hot. And when we entered into somewhere February and it started raining, you realize that the atmosphere is changing. So if all we had was a dry season, very hot weather, I'm, uh, I'm sure the world would be a very hard place to live. And if all we had was also rainy season all the time, it won't be a good experience at all. Particularly if you live in a place where your road is very, very wonderful by African standards. Praise God. So it's very important. God ordained time and scheduled seasons for our benefit. Look at Acts chapter 14 verse 17. Nevertheless, he did not leave himself without a witness. In that he did good. Take note of the word he did good. Gave us rain from heaven and fruitful seasons. Filling our hearts with food and gladness. God did us good. How? By giving us fruitful season. I pronounce to you, any unfruitful season, any dry season you are in is over. And I prophesy a season of fruitfulness for you. Spiritual fruitfulness, financial fruitfulness, mental fruitfulness. May you be fruitful in every area of your life. In this new season we have entered, in this new month we have entered, may God bring you into a season of all round fruitfulness. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. God gave us times and seasons for, so to our benefit. Times and seasons are for our advantage. I mean, there were things I'm sure in last year you didn't like. Some of us, last year was an awesome year. And you wish that last year would last forever. Another person, last year was the worst year for the person. And the person wishes that the year will never even appear again. But the good news is that God changes times. So 2019 was bad for you, but here you are. God has given you 2020. Just to let you start afresh. Just to give you an opportunity to begin anew. And this that's why I know that this year, God will do strange things with your life. I, I still believe that 2020 is a very prophetic year. 
I remember I told you from the beginning of the year during our January fasting that this year is a very prophetic year. And what the devil is doing for me affirms the fact that 2020 is a prophetic year because almost in every, when you look into scripture very well, every time God was ready to do something unique, Satan will always want to step into it and mess things up. But the devil is a liar. He's lost it already. And we are coming up better and greater and stronger in the mighty name of Jesus. God gave us time. Everybody has time. Everybody. If there is one thing nobody can accuse God of is the fact that everybody has time. And hear me. God did not just give you time. He gave you equal measure of time. One gift God has given to everyone equally is the gift of time. Some of us were not born into certain families we are happy with. But hey, whether you like where you were born or not, the rich and the poor, they all have 24 hours. And what you do with yours will determine the outcome of your life. And I pray that through this teaching, you will come to value your time. You will come to appreciate your time. You will come to see the need to maximize this season and this moment you are in. Number three, the third reason why we need to understand times and seasons is because there's a right time and a proper season for every activity. There's a right time and a proper season for every activity. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 6. This is how the good news is. said there is a right time and the right way to do everything. But we know so little. There is a right time and the right way to do everything. But we know so little. The living Bible says there is a right time for everything. A proper understanding of time and seasons helps us to do the right things at the right time. When you do the right things at the right time, you can be sure to succeed and prosper. And I know that these times may not be right times, but I believe that you can still convert these times. When you are under lockdown at home, some of us have a program. There are some of us who are actively working from home. Others have just resigned themselves to faith and they are just watching TV 24-7. That's why God has inspired me to come your way with this teaching so that you can properly position yourself to maximize the moment and fulfill destiny and fulfill your purpose. In Jesus' precious name. So there is a proper time we need to understand seasons and times because there's a right time and there's a proper season for every activity under the heaven. Number four, we need to understand times and seasons so we can make the most of our lives by making the most of our time. The only way you can make the most of your life is to make the most of your time. You know what? Time is life. Look at Ephesians chapter 5 verse 16. Make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Redeeming the time. The New Living Translation says, make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Make the most. 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 These are evil times. These are dangerous times. But our good news for you, you can still get the best out of evil things. The Bible says God is able to make all things work together for our good, including these times at home. Make the most of every opportunity. Make the most of it. How much, how rich and fulfilling your life will be is all predicated on the value and the, the value you place on your time. Time is life. Time well spent is life well lived. Time well spent is life well lived. Until you master time, you have not mastered life. To master life, the first step to mastering life, gaining mastery over life, is to master time. The easiest way to abuse your life is to abuse your time. What are you doing with your time in these seasons? Are you just home, sleeping and waking up, watching TV, or you are home, maximizing every minute of the day? At the end of this season, if tomorrow the government lifts up the, the, the lockdown and we are told, share with the world what you did in these times. What can you share? Is it all movies you can talk about, the number of movies you have watched or the number of WhatsApp messages you exchanged or the number of likes you had on Facebook? That you, or is that all you have to show? Or you'll be able to come up with the number of books you've read, with the number of contacts you've been able to reach out to, with the number of people whose life you have touched differently. 
Make the most of every opportunity. We need to understand time number five so we can seize and maximize our opportunities. In 2008, I wrote my first book, Time and Opportunity, Your Access Keys to Greatness. The whole book was written based on Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 11. He says, I returned and I saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift. The battle is not to the strong. Yet bread is not to the wise, nor yet riches to men of understanding, nor yet favor to men of skill. But time and chance happen to them all. There is something everybody has. Time and chance. Time and chance. There is nobody in life who can say that as for him, he has never had an opportunity. Everybody gets an opportunity in life. But not everybody maximizes their opportunity. Because in order to maximize your opportunities in life, first, you must maximize your time. It is only after you have successfully maximized your time that you can maximize your opportunities. God gives us time so we can uh, do two major things. One, he gives us time to prepare and then he gives us time to perform. And most of the time, when we don't use our time preparing ourselves well, we are not able to seize our opportunities. That's why it's important that you make sure that every moment, every minute, every second in this season counts. And I pray that through this teaching, God will guide you to make the most of these times in the mighty name of Jesus. Every season of life, good or bad, is loaded with opportunities. Every season of life, every season of life, good or bad, it's loaded with opportunity. Look at it. Even with this COVID-19, here we are. For the first time, industries in Ghana are being empowered to work on their own. Industries. A lot of things we used to import. Now, government says, I'm going to cut down import. And I tell you, in our nation, Ghana, in most African countries, if government can make the bold decision to cut down on a lot of import, our dollar, our CD will not depreciate like the way it's depreciating. There will be more jobs in our nation. Our economy will become stronger. These are things that are coming out. If COVID-19 had not come, I'm not sure that the, the incentives that the pharmaceutical companies and other companies are getting would have ever been given to them. So in every bad thing, every negative circumstance, particularly if you're a child of God, the Bible said, and we know all things work together for the good of them that love God to them who are the called according to his purpose. For some people, the benefit in these negative times or these dangerous times are they are experiencing it already. But if you are yet to see your own, I see your season coming. By the time this season is over, that idea that will launch you up into a global scale, that idea will be delivered, they would have been delivered to you in the name of Jesus. The proper utilization of time sets the stage for the full maximization of your opportunities in life. The proper utilization of time. Until you put your time into profitable use, there's no way you'll be able to maximize your time. The proper utilization of time sets the stage for the full maximization of your opportunities in life. You will not miss your opportunities in life. When you look at the life of Jesus while he was on earth, he wept on two occasions. The first time he wept was when uh, uh, he wept one when Lazarus, his friend, died. And he was at the point of raising him up. The second time he wept was when the city of Jerusalem missed their opportunity. The Bible said when he lifted up his eyes and saw them, that they had missed their, they did not know their hour of visitation. The Bible said Jesus wept. And hear me, anything that can make Jesus weep must be something that must matter a great deal to you. If he wept because somebody missed their opportunities, I'm sure he's still weeping now. When he looks at some of us in these seasons, how we are managing our lives, how we are using our time, the way we are whiling away time, God is sad. And I pray that you will not be one of those who will make him sad in this season. In the mighty name of Jesus. Number six, we need to understand time so we can live as wise and not as fools. We need to maximize time. Last year or last few years, I began teaching on living as wise. I did it up to a point and I paused it and I'm sure that in due time I will get back to teach it and finish it. Living as wise. The truth of the matter, my beloved, is that everybody in life will live in one of two ways. 
you are either living as wise or you are living as foolish. Nobody lives in a neutral way. Everybody in life, you are either consciously living as wise or you are unconsciously living as foolish. And it's very important. In the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verse 15 to 17. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15 to 17. It says, see that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand the will of God. Look at what, how the New Living Translation puts it. New Living. He said, don't act th- thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants. Start from verse 15, please. So be careful how you live. I hope someone heard me. Be careful how you live. Be careful how you live. Be careful the way you are managing yourself. Be careful what you do with your time. Be careful how you are living in these times. Don't live like fools, but live like those who are wise. So like I said earlier, everyone on the planet is consciously living as wise or unconsciously living as a fool. May you not live as a fool. May you not live as a fool. Because you see, sooner or later, this lockdown period when it's over, if you live as a fool, it will show it. If you live as a wise, it will show it. That's why God is coming your way with this specific timely teaching to help you maximize every minute and every moment of this season. A proper understanding of times helps you to live a life of wisdom. Look at Proverbs, uh, Psalm 90 verse 4. He says, so teach us to number our days that we may get the heart of wisdom. The men of Issachar were men who had understanding of the times. The Bible said, all their brethren were at their command. I see you gain command. I see you gain authority. I see you rise up into dominion. Even as you maximize your time, awaiting the glorious opportunities God has packed for you. Finally, we need to understand times and seasons. So, we can understand and pursue the will of God for our lives. So we can understand and pursue the will of God for our lives. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 17. Don't act thoughtlessly, but try to find out and do what the Lord wants you to do. And in this teaching series, I'll be showing you one after the other, particularly from Sunday, I'll be showing you one after the other, some of the things I believe God wants us to know and do in these specific times. These times, what are some of the important things? He said, we shouldn't live carelessly. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 17. The New Living Translation said, don't act thoughtlessly, but try find out what the will of God is. Ephesians, not Ecclesiastes, please. Find out what the will of the Lord is. Follow it. Pursue it. Child of God, the most important thing you can pursue in life is the will of God. When Jesus came, he came to show us how we ought to live our lives. And one of the things that Jesus was very conscious of at every time and in all things was the will of God. In John chapter 6 verse 38, he said, For I came down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of the Father who sent me. When Jesus was on earth, he was mindful that His actions were after the will of God. Everything he did was after the will of God. John chapter 4 verse 34. He said, Jesus said unto them, My food is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. Beloved, that was Jesus' preoccupation. Jesus was preoccupied with the will of God. From day one, the moment he turned 12 to the time he departed into glory. Everything he, he followed, pursued was the will of God. In these times, are you pursuing the will of God or you are just doing your own thing? When we understand the times, our heart will be directed to pursue the will of God. When we understand the times, we will not just live life the way we want it, but we will live life the way God wants it. Mind you, one of the things that endeared the heart of David to God was the fact that David had the heart after God and after the will of God. In Acts chapter 13 verse 22, and when he had removed him, the Bible said, he raised up unto them David to be their king, to whom also he gave a testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my heart 
who will do all my will. I pray that in this season, God will find in you a man, a woman who will do all his will. We need to understand the times because when we understand the times, we gain command. We are able to make the most of our lives. We are able to advance. We are able to dominate. We are able to maximize our lives and fulfill destiny. It's my prayer that the wisdom of God will be yours through this season. The wisdom of God will come to you through this teaching. The wisdom of God will reach out to you and put you on a platform where you can make the most of your life and maximize every opportunity God has scheduled for you in 2020. Mind you, this season will soon pass. And when it passes, whatever you are going to do, whatever steps you are going to take are all going to be predicated on what you did with this time that you have. Don't just see it as a holiday. See it as a time that God has given you to invest in areas of importance, in areas that can shape your life and destiny for the better. May the Lord bless you and may the Lord grant you the heart that will go after his will and pursue his will in every area of your life. So we bow our heads and pray. I believe that God has spoken to you tonight. You want to pray and say, Lord, like David said, he said, teach us to number our days. That's what David, it was a prayer. Moses, uh, 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 Moses, Moses wrote the psalm and said, teach us to number our days that we may apply our heart unto wisdom. You want to pray and say, Father, guide me, help me. Holy Spirit, teach me to number my days. Teach me to number my minutes, my seconds. Let me apportion my time properly. I'm at home. It's a freedom season for me, but Lord, I don't want to abuse these times. I don't want to abuse this moment you have given me. Help me to maximize it. Help me to take full advantage of it. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Spirit of God. In Jesus' precious name. Father, we honor you tonight. We bless you for the privilege to come before you. Thank you for instruction. Thank you for guidance. Thank you for understanding. Thank you for revelation. Thank you, Spirit of God, for challenging us to make the most of this season. We pray the Lord, grace will come upon us afresh. Grace to plan our lives. Grace to make our moments and our minutes count. Grace to prepare ourselves with the chronos time you have given us so that in our curious moment we can make the most of our lives. We give you praise. We give you glory for help by your spirit. In Jesus' much less name. Amen. Maybe you tune in, you've not given your life to Christ. That is, this is one of the most finest moments of your life. The Bible said, he that had the son had life, but he that had not the son had no life. And eternal damnation are waiting. You want to be delivered and spared from eternal damnation. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. You want to receive God's gift of eternal life. This moment, wherever you are, whatever time you are watching this, bow down your heads. Let me pray with you. As you pray this prayer after me, say, Dear Lord Jesus, I admit that I'm a sinner and I come to the feet of the cross. I confess you with my mouth that you are my Lord. And I believe with all my heart that you died for me. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for coming into my life. Thank you for giving me grace to live for you. I boldly confess I'm born again. I'm a new creature. Thank you, Father, for making me your own. Lord, I thank you for everyone who prayed that prayer. I pray the Lord, you cause them to become rooted and grounded in you. Cause them to be established in the faith. Let nothing be able to take them away from your presence. I thank you and I bless you for their lives. In Jesus' much less name. Amen. If you pray that prayer in faith, I want you to pick the number that is scrolling on the screen. The email. We want to hear from you. We want to help you in your walk with God. The Lord bless you. This teaching series will continue Sunday. And I look forward to seeing you. Make sure you come along and invite your friends to come along with you. The Lord bless you. It's time for us to honor the Lord with our substance. Like I told you earlier, a lot is going on. A number of people are challenged. And as a church, we have embraced that challenge to help a lot of people. That's why we need to still give in this season. So you want to package your offering, your tithe, your first fruit, every seed you have to present before God. Lift it up while we pray. You have your phones with you. You have your checkbooks, whatever means you are using to just get it ready. 
as we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we honor you with our substance. Thank you for abundance. Thank you for miracle money. Thank you for supernatural supplies in this season. Thank you that we'll be moving from glory to glory financially, even in this season, as you bless us in Jesus' matchless name. Amen. God richly bless you. So, we look forward to uh, having you on Sunday. The Lord bless you. Stand on your feet wherever you are. Let me pray with you. Now, I declare the blessings of God over your life. I declare that the peace of God will rest upon you. You and your family shall remain protected and covered in the mighty name of Jesus. No one member in this church family shall be a victim of the virus. In the name of Jesus, on behalf of... Uh, uh, I use every health personnel in this church as a point of contact. I pray for all frontline health workers in this country and beyond the borders of this nation. In every country where this virus is has invaded, I pray for healing and deliverance for all nations. In the name of Jesus, thank you that this virus is cursed. It goes back to sender. Thank you that life restores normalcy. In Jesus' much less name, we give you praise. We give you glory. Now the Lord watch over you. The Lord preserve you. The Lord give you peace and grant you the desires of your heart. You are blessed. Till I see you on Sunday, stay blessed, knowing that I love you very deeply. You are blessed. Okay, so uh, I think uh, on Sunday evening, last Sunday evening, I made I announced to you about uh, the establishment of COVID-19 relief fund in our church, that through which we have been able to help a number of people, about 80 uh, widows and their families in a slum community around where our church is. We've been able to minister to them, send them food items and all others. Some of our church members whose job have been affected have also been assisted. And we still want to do more. And we want you to partner with us or uh, join us in the effort to be a blessing to others. The Bible says that as we have opportunity, in the book of Galatians chapter 6 verse 10, let us do good unto all men, especially those in the household of faith. And I want to encourage you, seize the opportunity. This is one of the things that God expects us to do in these times. The Lord bless you as you join us in meeting the needs of others. You are blessed.